I'm going to show you how to configure Samba for sharing directories. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have the software installed. So you do yum install Samba on the server and I have it installed. Um, the next thing you want to do is go in and do your configuration. The configuration files are stored in the etc Samba directory. So go over to etc Samba. And there is this uh, smb.conf file. And there's also smb.conf.example. The easiest way to do this is to copy the smb.conf.example file over the smb.conf file and then modify it. So I'm going to do that. Copy smb.conf.example over the smb.conf file. Overwrite that. Then I go and I edit the smb.conf file. In the file, there are two kinds of comments. They're the ones that start with a hash mark, which are really comments. And then there's the ones that start with the semicolon, which are not really comments. They're just commented um, configuration options. So I'm going to change my work group to be example.com. I'll leave the server string the same. Change my server name to be server.example. Dot com and then in the front I'm going to take away that semicolon to make it uncommented and this is probably good enough for now in that section and then I jump down to the bottom I'm going to create myself a share to export there are all kinds of other things in here like say WinS servers and, and Active Directory type things but I don't really care about those I'm going to jump down to the bottom here and I'm going to create myself a share. So I want to share a directory called storage. Call it storage. And I create my definition information here. So first you have a comment that basically is a little sentence about what it is. Maybe it's storage for files. Doesn't matter what you call it, just put something there. Have a path. This is the location on the system where the directory that's being exported is located. So I'm going to create a directory called storage later in the slash directory. Next, I want to tell it whether or not it's public. So I'm going to make this one public. Yes. I'm also going to make it writable. Yes. But it's not going to be printable. And that's really it for the configuration. So I just exit out and I'm ready to start the service if I want. Um, before I go much further though, I want to create that directory that I am sharing so that it can be shared properly. So I make the directory storage and I need to set permissions on that directory and also set the SE Linux context type. So I go to that directory. Take a look around. I can see it's empty. Plus minus capital Z. I can see that. Plus minus L Z. I can see that the current context type is default dot T. I'm going to change that to be Samba share T. So I do ch con minus T Samba share T, and I will do my storage directory. I could either do slash storage or I can do dot because I'm in the directory. Next I want to allow any any user on the system to be able to go into that directory and add files. This makes it easier when you export it. Um, if you're exporting things like uh, installation files or some sort of media, you would probably want to make it read only and not worry about giving perm people permissions to modify. But I'm going to give people permissions to modify as well. So ch mod 777 storage. Once again, instead of slash storage, I could have just done 777 for dot. So I do a directory listing again. You can see that I have given them people full read, write, execute permissions. And it is set to the Samba share T type. All right, if I wanted to create a file in here, just so you can see it, um, touch some file.txt. Now, because it is in a directory that has already been set to Samba share T, the type should be 
Samba share T. So you can see that is Samba share T type. If I created the directory, added the files, and then later set the type, the SE Linux context type, then I would have to go in and change it for individual files or do a recursive changing of the type. Either way, it needs to be set. Next, you need to have a user that's going to be using Samba to get in. So I do SMB, SSWD. It has to be a user who's already on the system somewhere. So I have a user nobody. And I'm going to go ahead and set a password for nobody. So nobody. So the password to nobody. Nobody. And then it will say the user's added if it's not already there. It's already there for my machine, so it just sets the password. All right. Next thing I want to do is start the Samba service. So you can do system CTL start SMB to start the service. If we want to start on boot time, you then enable it. And now it's enabled and it'll run automatically. I also want it to be um, set up to allow connections through the firewall because I want to be able to connect to it from a different machine. So I do firewall CMD add service equals Samba. So it's not SMB, it's Samba this time. And I want to make it permanent. So the next time I have to restart the firewall, it will be there as well. All right. So now I should be up and ready to go. The next thing I do is test it from a Linux client machine. So I jump over to Linux client machine. Now, the way to test it is you first need to make sure you have your Samba tools here. So you do yum install Samba. And I already have them installed. So it says they're already installed, the latest version. That's good. So I do SMB client. This tool is kind of nice to be able to see things. I've been minus capital U, pass it a username, nobody, and pass it a server, server.example.com, and it'll prompt me for the password. I tell it the password is nobody, and you can see right here that it's exporting the storage disk, and you can see the comment right here that says storage for files. All right, so that's there. At this point, I could mount the file system I wanted to, um, I can make a mount point, so MNT storage, and in that mount point, I could mount the directory, and I do it basically by doing the double slash, except it's going to be the, uh, the Linux slash instead of the Windows slash. It'd be server.example.com slash, and the share name, which is storage. And I'm going to be mounting it in my MNT storage directory. If I do that, uh, I also need to pass things like the username. So user, oops, minus O, user equals nobody. I could also pass the password to comma password equals nobody. And it should mount. And then I can go and look at the uh, the directory I created, which is MNT storage. And I can see that there is the some file there. I can unmount that right now. MNT storage. And I could go in and, since I don't want to type in the password on the command line, I could create a credentials file. So I do a nano APC directory and just do samba.txt. In this file, I create the username. I list the username as nobody and the password as nobody. Except you have to spell nobody correctly. All right. I do that. And then if I wanted to mount the directory again, I could either pass it the username and password right here or tell it my credentials file is my etc see, samba 
TXT file, and that should mount it. Um, I could also add the same thing in my FS tab configuration file, except when I do that, um, I would want to list the credentials uh, option right there as the options instead of default, the defaults. And this right here, the first portion would be the device, the second portion would be the mount point. So if you want to do that, you can do that. Although, in reality, you probably don't want to be using Linux as a Samba client. So we will just not do that. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at it from a Windows point of view. We have this Windows machine, um, and this is nice. We want to then take this machine, put it down where you can see it, and I want to mount my partition here. There's a couple ways to do that. First, I could just type in my Windows slashes, slash slash server.example.com, or you can put in the IP address and just press enter. It'll prompt you for username and password, and it doesn't prompt me because I've done it before. And you could set it up right here. You can go in the storage, and I can see some file. That's nice. If I wanted to, I could also go into computer, and in here, there's this map network drive. So I can say, well, where do I want to put it? Maybe it's the S drive because it's storage. I put in the slash slash server.example.com slash store storage. I'm going to connect with the different credentials. I click finish. It's going to ask me for the username and password, so I can do nobody and nobody. I could remember if I wanted to click right here. It will create the S drive with some file in it. Um, if I go back here, I can see that the network location is mapped. And that will allow me to put files in there, grab files from it. I can see the file is empty. Anyway, that is how you set up Samba and use it for Linux and Windows machines.